Mike from Glad Hill Customs. Um, I'm going to do a little video today, and it's one that's requested quite often, and it's how I do my gas pedals or accelerator cuts or whatever you want to call them, right? So just a quick little tutorial. Sorry, that's dumber as per usual. Um, but figure we'll do just a quick little tutorial, um, quick rundown of what it is that I do in my process and the steps on it. So um, going over what we're going to need. Okay, first and foremost, ruler, pencil. Okay, now everybody's got that stuff. The next step that you might probably not have, um, carbide cutting tips. This is the one that I prefer. Okay, I don't even know what the name is. Got it from Amazon. You search carbide cutters. Um, it comes to kit with like seven or eight of them that are various shapes and sizes, and I use a few of them, but this one is the one that I use for my pedal cut. Okay, and then also sandpaper. I'll tell you why we use this later. This is just um, anything higher, low grit, you know, this is about 80, I believe. Um, 80, 120, somewhere around there is this, the paper that I prefer for this step. Um, we'll get to that when it's time. So, before I flip the camera around, I'm going to show you, boom, this is the one I'm working on. Okay, integrated beaver tail, back strap, it's got the undercuts, a little hybrid bevel, and then you see here... I have taken uh, just an 80 grit drum, quarter inch, and I have gouged out the area for that slide release, okay? That is step number one. Now, here on the frames, see this line right here? So that is the line that I use, and you can see I'm cut right down to it, maybe just into it a little bit, which is fine. That's thick enough that it's not going to compromise anything, but try not to go too far into the frame there because then you can run into structural issues. Okay, so but after I take and gouge that out, I move on to step number two, and that's what we're going to look at right now. I'm going to flip this around, and um, yeah, we'll flip it, flip the camera around, and we'll get into it. All right, let's do it. All right, so. When I do this, in order to keep things um, even on all of my builds across the board, no matter what they are, I like to use reference points, okay? The easiest reference point for the Glock frame is going to be this trigger pin right here. So I line up right at the bottom of the trigger pin, at the ruler there, and then I typically go off of this point right here so this comes across there's a little recess area there so where that recess comes across the flat spot on it and then this line here so that's where i aim for when i'm drawing my guidelines okay so i'm going to line it up with the bottom of the trigger pin there and i'm going to line it up with my reference point here and so, just draw a quick line. You see how it comes right to the point there? Now that gives us an accurate and even cut on every frame that you do. If you use the same reference points, point A and point B. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on this side. Bottom of the trigger pin right to my corner, both my reference points there, and just sketch a line. There it is. Okay, now we move on to the next part. I'm going to grab my Fordham in this cutting bit. Okay, I run about 20,000 RPMs. Was kind of tricky when filming okay so just 
Dang it, can't get it in the... This having a flat spot on it right there cuts a nice edge and it allows to follow that line really nicely. So that's kind of roughed in there. I'm gonna take a look at it this way, because remember we're following this frame line right here as our guide for depth. So you can see I'm not as deep as I need to be there, or as I would like to be. Okay, see how it's kind of wavy. You can see right here we're at good depth and out here it kind of comes out. And then here we're at the finished depth as well. So right through the middle there, I still have some material that I'm gonna remove. You want to pay close attention to that so you don't get too deep. flashing on it there but for the most part that's to the depth that we want it now you'll notice that it's kind of wavy in there it's all not really even or anything like that but um, that's where the sandpaper comes in and I'll show you that after I cut the other side for it <laughs> I like to use use it to kind of scrape that flashing off yeah I know not really hygienic but here we go okay so that looks pretty close there okay a little bit of flashing left on it and that's fine so now I'm gonna get rid of that cut here and I'm gonna switch over to Just my 80 grit sanding drum, about 10,000 RPMs. And I'm gonna take in somewhat, just smooth this back up. 
Okay, there's still gonna be some high and low spots to it, but I'm just trying to get somewhat uh, of a uniform surface there. Nothing crazy. Okay, just real quick. Circular motions. We're going back and forth. Get some of that out of the way. All right. Rough cut, done. Now, I don't know if you can really see it on the camera, but from cutting and sanding, there's going to be some waves that run through that. And that we don't want that. And you can set and sand it out, you know, with your Dremel and sanding drum and all that. Um, it works, it's time consuming, but this is what I've found works the best. A little bit of WD-40, keep my, giving my haters something to talk about. Okay, let that set for just a second. Strip of sanding paper. I usually cut around one inch uh, width, sometimes half inch, just depends um, on what I have laying around, but <clears throat> time on that it's a little thick okay so i've got it folded up i'm gonna take and i'm just gonna hit this back and forth pretty quick a couple times now is what that's doing is that is taking out the high spots okay and it's gonna make it all somewhat like just level and and uniform so if you look, there's still a few high spots on there. So I'm gonna give it just a little more. Boom. See how fast that was? Now you can set and chase it with your Dremel and your sanding drum for hours or you can spend 20 seconds uh, and get that knock, those high spots knocked right down and just be done with it. It's all about time, right? Well, obviously you wanna be efficient, but when you're running a business or anything of that nature, it's about time. The quicker you can get it done effectively, the better. Especially if you can make it look good, right? That's what we're doing this for. Nice and flat. Now from here, I'll just run up through all of my grits. 80, 120, 240, 320, 400, and be done. I'm gonna polish it out really quick and uh, I will come back on and kind of show you where it's at before the next step. All right, just a quick little polish on all this stuff. You can see I'm, I haven't polished all of it, right? But so I've got everything smooth. I've got most of the lines worked out of it. And there's still a couple that I'll get like right there. I'll get that when I'm doing my finished sanding um, after my borders and that are all cut. But next step, okay, got your ledge there, nice and sharp though, not what we want. We do have the material removed, so we'll be able to create that ledge, but we haven't created it yet fully. So next. Another carbide cutter comes in the same pack as this one, but you see this one's kind of flared. This one's more of a cylinder. This one's got a flare to it right there on the tip. I like using this one to make this cut. 
So once again, I'm gonna run about 20,000 RPMs. Okay, take my frame, take my Fordham or whatever I'm using, and I'm gonna hold this on a kind of an angle here. Kind of an angle, and I'm just gonna run it until my flared tip all but touches my flat area there. See, there's a bit of a line there. Okay, gonna take it to where it's uniform. Okay, looking more like a ledge now. I'm gonna take and do away with this line here. And that gives us a nice pedal there, or a pad. Okay, we can really get some good leverage on that when we're, you can't see, but some when we're shooting there. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. Now, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth on the actual pedal itself because it's gonna get stippled, right? So we're just trying to shape it. And now that I've got the initial shape kind of lined out and cut, I'm gonna run through and I'll run my border line, which we all do it differently, but mine typically straight across and kind of swoop up and into there. Once my border is cut and I have the exact layout of my pedal, I will come in and I'll smooth out this line here so there's not a ledge or a, like an actual sharp line in it. And I'll kind of sand all this stuff down just with a diamond burr tip um, at, right before I clean up or right before I stipple. You know, I'll go through and kind of clean it up so it is somewhat smoother, you know, when, when I'm done and before I go to texture it. But that's about it. I mean, that's kind of where we're at. Now that that sharp edge is out of the way, I'll be able to get in here with my sanding drum and I'll be able to clean up some of these lines that you can still see in there. Clean up there a little bit more. But that's it. That's all there is to it. Pretty simple. I'll go ahead and get this one wrapped up and then I'll make sure and get some pictures of it. Uh, to put in towards the end of the video here so you can see exactly how it looks when she's done. Right on. All right, guys, we are back. Um, I went through and got my finished sanding done. Um, I cut my borders and got everything prepped, so I'm ready to stipple, but I wanted to show you what those pads or these pads pedals whatever you want to call them um, are supposed to look like roughly right we all do them a little different but I'll show you what they look like before stippling um, and before they're actually textured everything it, you know you've seen everything up to this point how we go through and how I cut them how I shape them yada 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 but this is how they look before um, I go through and texture it okay see and you can see i've taken and i 
I took off the sharp edges here that I was talking about, kind of rounded everything out, but that's going to give you a nice ledge there for, well, I guess it would be that, but for your thumb to set on, and that really does quite a bit when it comes to mitigating recoil. So, yeah, pretty simple. Takes a little bit of time, right? But all in all, I mean, it's really not too big of a deal. Top down, you can see. Follow that line. That's it. That's all there is to it, guys. Nice, simple, um, and yeah, done now, right? so cool well like always appreciate you guys watching thanks for the follows you know the comments likes subscribes all that fun stuff um anything else you guys want to see i know i get asked for videos and stuff all the time but hit hit me up let me know what you want to see and we'll keep keep putting them out so peace